Yeah. He brings facts. I guess no, you are looking I, good today, I, I, Leo. I, I, I did say that it, it could be an element of surprise. There are many factors, right? Many factors here. But what I want to highlight is the respect. And right now, Brandy Sports, they have stayed blue. That means RQ Hoshi says red. We want this chance to go double picks. And that's how they want to react to this and, again, win this race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, in terms of this race, being able to kind of dictate the pace of the game, RQ Hoshi deciding to go onto the red side, something a little bit more familiar, something that we've seen them actually adapt with against the Burmese Ghouls itself. We saw a couple of really good drafts and slowly pulling back to what they're usually used to, as I said before. But Contra, where do you think this is leading? Well, it's definitely leading towards what they want to open up for the side of Red Esports once again. I think that we are going to be seeing the different sort of the uh, phase coming from the side of RQ Hoshi and what they want Your to pick up uh, coming in towards that double uh, things that they can go for in the initial phase. And with that, Esmeralda being banned away. The question now is what I mentioned, the Yuzong. Is it going to land on RQ Hoshi's side? Ooh. Maybe, I don't know, because they still have those third bands, and those third bands generally kind of tell you is like what is the priority for either one of these teams, right? Mm, yeah, uh, Brandy Sports. Yeah, they're a team that could probably just focus on the tank as much. But Herky Hoshi, I think they like the Lapu Lapu more than the Yuzhong. Like, you would see them pick the Yuzhong, but it could be on the second phase. They like the Lapu Lapu more. I mean, Lapu Lapu, I don't know, like looking at the stats of whether or not Lapu Lapu or Yuzhong, we've seen the impact of Yuzhong more, uh, occur more. And honestly, Lapu Lapu and Yuzhong have a pretty decent win rate overall. But uh, Very much so. coming out, coming up for this last uh, last band for RRQ Hoshi here, do you think that is going to be the go-to? Or are we not going to see Silvana here? I think they have to respect more Yuzhong's flat easy. Mm. Yep. Oh, but instead, they both play with fire and they're opening up the side lanes and the tanks. <sighs> so yeah, Lapu Lapu, Yuzhong, they're all still on the table. The tanks, Jawhead, Cho, still on the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even the mages are relatively open too, like none of them were touched. Yeah, I'm, I want to look at the mages here because the first game, Arky Hoshi did pick up the Matilda, which is pretty much out in the open. I think that definitely having somebody who can just dish out quite a chunk of damage in the early game can actually put Red Esports slightly behind, finally chasing in with all these small little leads. So Red Esports having a difficulty here selecting their first zero. In about five seconds from now, we're going to be seeing how they will be dealing with this and they will go in to take that Matilda before anything else. I think this is a smart option here. It kind of just leaves the draft pretty open for their sides. Four counter picks onto RRQ's part, but RQ, they see this, and now they have to take advantage with the two picks and the benefits of being on that red side. Uh, it looks like they've locked in the Yutong. It has been working out extremely well for their team. The question is, Selena, Jawhead, we've seen them both kind of interchange between them within the first rotation. Wow, this is actually a shift in terms of uh, the pacing that RRQ Hoshi wants oh. to go for. They go straight for two team fight uh, heroes here on the first phase. Well, for Brent Esports, they have a lot to. Uh, they have a lot of choices to go for. They can go for a show. They can go for what? Uh, I mean, I a jawhead. I wouldn't be too surprised. Not, not, not really Serena because they have the Matilda already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I wouldn't be too surprised if they decided to get the Cho in this situation. So arguably even an Alice as well? So far, Cho has been trusty for Lusty and I think they should, again, always focus on the mid lane. So far, first pick was on point. I think before the round goes back, there has to be some answer. And this could be a flex Baksha. Could go on Lusty, could go on Flap Easy from the side lanes again just to really call uh, the regeneration on this Yuzhong. And as well, Lancelot, which, you know, as great as uh, Brenny Sports' Carl Teasy was on the Lancelot across of M2, not just the games that he lost. He actually scored the very first Savage of the whole entire tournament with this. Um, it's still two out of three in the first phase that they answer. Yeah, and uh, just looking at these boxes, it, it just gives oh. 
a little bit of flashback of PTSD to some of those uh, players that oh. were actually facing off against that brand esports side yesterday because this boxer is so potent to just, you know, get in the face of whether or not you have a chill, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, game-winning Baksha against Alter Ego yesterday, but yeah, Araki Hoshi, each pick so far have been denial picks. They didn't need to ban them because they were planning to pick them up anyways. Yeah. Remember, uh, the first two picks here for the side of Araki Hoshi, they rely so much on the lifesteal or the spell vamp that they have. So that means if you go and try to take the regeneration a bit down, tone it down a bit, that is going to hurt their tanking capability in the long run. So this Baksha and Lancelot just is just so good for the side of Brain Esports. I mean, I think I think it's pretty great, especially when it comes to just den the denial of health regeneration overall, especially when it comes to both Sylvana as well uh, as well as the Yuzong, both pretty dependent on it. Both can abuse the Oracle, uh, both will look to get, you know, the Bloodlust Axe and the Concentrated Energy respectively. But Bren now banning out the uh, banning out the Ling, forcing the question onto RRQ, how exactly are they going to get something that scales in towards the late game, especially when you have someone like Carl Teasy, he's got the Lancelot already. Brand Esports, when they go for these kinds of Lancelot lineups, they not they don't necessarily try to go for a marksman side oh. lane. But if it's a possibility and if they are forced, Rebo can use a 1-1. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Now, going into the second phase of picking, that was the Roger locked out. Oh, they're going to steal away the 1-1. Argue Hoshi, Red, your oh. mind butters. 1-1 one, one here for the side lane. Might be Wiz King, might be R7 now, Brandy Sports. They're closing this up and without wasting okay. any time. Hold up! Double Bruh. Assassin! Side lane Hayabusa! Can I also call it like triple Assassin in such a way like... Like... Looking. Quadruple, technically. If yeah. you're looking at the game's descriptions, yeah, Matilda and <laughs> Selena. Interesting! That's yeah. a lot of pickup potential. So, they don't have a tank per se that's gonna roam early. Flat okay. Stay into the side lane. Uh, all right. This is getting even more interesting. All right. All right. We are this. seeing the Helker coming into the picture, and this is actually magnificent. Yo. Ren Esports has a good draft, but RRQ Hoshi with just one pick. Mm. They, they just give a lot of. They just, you know, try to shut down. They tried to shut down Red Esports trap as much as possible. They needed to find the pick. They picked the Hellcurt, and that answers a lot on Red Esports side. I think this is some interesting adaptations. I don't necessarily believe it is going to work. I'm kind of 50-50 on the Hellcurt pick here. I do see that it is great in some situations, but when you have Matilda, and especially with the Circling Eagle, you can almost guarantee a lockdown in these uh, in a lot of these points. And uh, it's going to be who initiates first and who is going to be able to get their opponent preemptively. And that's going to be the name of the game. Who makes the first move? I'm not even thinking about the farming situation. Like, how much gold do you need? And at what point will you say, okay, we're ready for these fights between these two teams that require so much across all their core heroes? Oh, I don't know, but <laughs> at least I don't have to think about it for now. You boys, you're going to have to take this one because this is too big for me to handle. Okay, now... Talk about ideation coming from the side of James, right? RK Hoshi, what's great about the Hellcurt heading in towards the late game is not only diving in towards the back line, getting that catch, it's also about that split push. Like, he just gets so much movement speed when he pops in that Dark Knight Falls. Just get across the map, like, who's gonna be able to catch him when you can't even see your enemy? I agree, because seeing that 1-1 one, one really likes the 1v1 duels as well, you can uh, deny the vision of the 1-1 one, one and just try to go for uh, the uh, the duels on her side. Yep, Lusty almost getting taken down there. I kind of get it. This is a roaming Matilda. It's going to be a Matilda that provides shields and relies on mobility to kind of weave in and out of combat like a tank. Natalia, as you know, hold up. Psycho uses the Cyclone Eye with just enough time. A defensive arrow here by a few. Real quick, let's uh, rehash or remind people what lanings look like. It's going to be an XP lane Hayabusa. Ooh, Psycho, a little frisky, wanting to get in on Rebo's face. And then the XP lane is going to be, oh, the gold lane is going to be the Baksha facing off against the 1-1. One, one. An interesting matchup, but ooh, Flappy's able to bully Wizking nonetheless. 
Yeah, of course, he's going to be soaking a little bit of the, sorry, the poke, and he's got to be careful with the Abyssal Arrow coming in as well, because Wiz King, if he just Ooh. gets oh. caught out, oh, okay. Purify, purify is safe. She got that cleanse. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, she's taking the A. Yeah, uh, well, he does have the innate cleanse, uh, cleanse yeah. in his kit. So, RQ hits Vin. Vin here might go down. Oh, Dark Knight Falls. That's going to be some darkness raining down onto Brandy Sports. And they get the first blood. What a bait right there by Vin. No, no trades here by Brandy Sports. Yeah, and this is definitely going to be a little bit uh, troublesome. Uh, for the likes of Red Esports eventually when they are trying to go in for those super picks, which is what they are looking to set up, right? And here comes R7 already using the Black Dragon for crossing out towards Baptiste as well as Lusty. Not going to be making much use out of this. As you can see, their health bars is still pretty much way up high, but the Hayabusa now moves over on towards the other side lane and it's going to be having a lot of <laughs> great pushes. What a mirrored swap there by Brandy Sports and Argyo. She now this fight in mid near the turtle breaks out. Oh, the turtle at about one fifth of health. That's going to be stolen here by Kaltizi. And that's Lusty taken down here by R7. We're going to have to back out. Even Kaltizi doesn't want any part of this as Few gets caught in the middle of three members of RRQ. Three for none is. The final tally here, the body count for RRQ Hoshi. The this better trade went yeah. over to the side of RRQ. This is to be expected because Rebo won't be part of any fights. But as long as oh. they can keep Psycho at bay, do not get caught in the way of the Dragons, that is going to be fine for Brent Esports. RRQ Hoshi, they're doing a great job as well. They're contesting, they're getting the kills, the pickoffs. And now what's left is they should go for the turrets. I, I think this is actually RQ's plan, right? Like, you really want the attention to be on Psycho as well as Vin instead of Sin or even R7 in that sort of sense. Wiz King kind of can self-sustain, especially when he does have the crossbow of Tang. So that's what they're hoping to pick up. Oh, Rebels. so an arrow here saves Lusty and a nice take down by Kaltizi on the Sin. And the unthinkable has happened. We were talking about how it should have been Psycho, it should have been Vin, but yeah, they caught out Sin at the very right moment. Real quick note, ladies and gentlemen, Avarice onto that Silvana. Nice way of the dragon here catching Lusty. He survives. That's going to be the Thorn Rose pushing away Psycho and the gang. That is the prowess of a Selena. Just throw out the arrow. If you hit the Hellcurt, the Hellcurt has no Purify. That is going to be Lance taking him down. And that is a lot of time. And this is uh, this is the thing about Hellcurt that I didn't read. Oh like, boy. But Vin! What? Tortoise Boy Sans underneath the turret allows him to go deep, way too deep, and there you go. R7 can't even regenerate despite having full Shah Essence. And off camera, by the way, that was a kill by Rebo. Oh. Those are the situations. Sin. But they're not done yet. Butters, let Lusty finish. He's chasing down Sin. That's going to be the Cyclone Eye going through the wall underneath the turret, the safety of his side of the map. So far, Butters, Lusty says, okay, you can speak. These okay. are the things. That After you, Baksha does like the dives that Red Esports are doing now. It won't be possible without him. Yeah, and those sort of catches were magnificent for Red Esports because now they do have a little bit of activation, especially on Kaltizi. This is their key towards those game winning trades. And just look at the amount of damage that Baptiste gets. So he was under the turret. It didn't mean much as he popped out the turn Poussants and the other members of Red Esports could easily go in to burst down the Hellcurt whenever he just appears on the wrong moment. And here comes Lusty yeah. pushing them back. Oh no, that's going to be Dark Knight Falls, but it was just a little too late. There was no setup, no follow through. Lusty gets blasted down by R7. A trade for the support and your core at Red Esports going off with a lottery. Yeah. Just looking at how this sort of the oh. jungler assassin meta is going, right? Of course, you have the tier one picks coming in from the side of oh. Red Esports, and oh boy. Psycho here gets popped into the Poissons underneath it. This hurts, this hurts. That's Vin taken down by Carl Tizi as they steal away the turtle. The purple, that is, and the turret. You see, I get the words mixed up, but nonetheless, I'm liking what Red Esports is bringing. Mm, Rebo. Mm, that oh. is, will the crossbow of Tang be thrown it out? It has it been! Be. That's whisking in the air! Pachow, pachow! That's Rebo taken down. 
That's the sound of a bird with a gun. Bird that's with a gun. That's, that's what okay. whiskey does. Right. That's, that's I, I'm pretty sure right. nobody wants to mess with a bird with a gun, but... <laughs> we'll allow it, we'll allow it. Yeah. Uh, what's big news right here, you know, like, other than guns, what is pretty much lethal? Blades and who's got the sharper blades right now? It's called Easy. Oh, yeah. Already having that blade of the hep disease being oh, bought yeah. out. Sin really struggling to find his footing in this entirety of the match. Like, oh, you, you got the Hayabusa, you got the Selena to deal with. After you get past that Boxer, it, it's honestly tough for him to choose from. Oh, Vindo jumping in with the Imperial Justice and R7 coming in with the Black Dragon for a few. Gonna use a Cyclone Eye, get out of here. Whiz oh, King. from the back, Whiz King gets skewered by Carl TZ. The other TZ brother takes down Psycho, and right now, the stickers come up. The Fallen Brothers of RRQ Hoshi, they have no choice but to accept this conversion from Brandy Sports as they push. This offlane Baksha is just making waves. But instead of Brandy Sports, he's controlling so much of this RRQ aggression. Yeah. Yeah, and just look at it from the drafting phase itself and say, okay, you can have the use on all you want, but remember this, I'm going to be activating what we can and now we do have a little bit of a look at the itemization as the turret falls in favor of the side of brand esports now crashing on towards sin as he is being forced a little bit backwards rebo is almost with in this battle sin is just getting the legion uh the legion swords and probably a blade of despair in just a bit but carl does have the item advantage with the with the heptasis. Yep, and he's sitting at five zero and three. This is the best we've seen Carl TZ today. This Lancelot is cleaner than the Claude he brought out. Now here is a in-game pause, real quick, a breather for everyone watching, and as well the players and us here at the caster's desk. All right, I think uh, Gideon has been paying attention. Man, how's the fight feeling so far? Okay, I need to ask about this Lancelot here because we've seen it. We've seen it on multiple different teams. We've seen it work and we've seen it not work. What's the difference between them and specifically Call Teasy for pulling it off? Because we've seen them actually knock down Alter Ego with this exact same pick. And to me, the mechanics seem solid for both yeah. sides, but I feel like it's not just Call Teasy who's making this work here. There is an outside factor. It's all definitely going to be the boxer. You just look at him. He's all over the map. He's always protecting his teammates everywhere he goes. And it's so easy for them to just move in and out, having so much mobility. I, I think this heat definitely plays a big factor in this match. The thing is, the difference between Carl, TZ, Lancelot, and other Lancelot is the confidence. It's his confidence level to just go in and out of the fight. Carl TZ is one of those players that really just want to push for kills. Okay, okay. And if there is ever one hero that enables him to do that, it's going to be the Lancelot. With the Puncture, Thorn Rose, Phantom Execution, there are a lot of dashes to bail him in and to bail him out if he ever needs help. Or he can just go for the Savage like he did to send 10 Second Frost Gaming. We're talking about the optimal form of Carl Tease here, right? Right, right, right. And right. I think there are layers to this question. We'll get to it later, because right. right now we're back into the battle. This is going to be 8 minutes, 20 seconds in. And yeah, look at this. Flappy Easy can just walk into the side of the jungle for our Kyoshi towards the orange here, pushing them out. Vin uses the Imperial Justice as a defense mechanism. Wave the Dragon onto this Baksha. Flappy Easy, not even... Not even blinking, not even sweating at all. He's like, yeah, that's fine. It happens. Ooh, look, I'm out. Look at Psycho even uh, catching yeah. that arrow yeah, so that like, Vin doesn't go down. I'm like, yeah, let me block it. Let me block it. Now a push up top. And even in mid, there's a huge wave crashing in. Oh, wow. Six to none. Contra, six to none. Yeah, and just look at them. They invest so many effort on towards Baptizi, and all of that is actually going to waste. How are you supposed to actually burst down the Baxian? This no apparent answer to that sin you don't even want to get to that sort of question even so it, it's really tough to ignore the box here and go for the rest with him just really pummeling them from getting anywhere backwards or forward now it's simply cycle there wait on the dragon and this might just be a big fight for Brent Esports. Ooh. Pulling it off. Yo, 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 yo. The mere presence of Flap TZ scares the rest of Arakyoshi. And this is 
prime rotations. Butters, do you agree with me? This is all leading up towards his first Lord take. Yes, it, it could be, but I think for them, they just want to go for the kills. They want to take the turrets right now so that RQ Hoshi will be forced back to stay in their base. Now, if you would look at the items here for RQ Hoshi, Psycho and Vin picked up an antique, uh, antique Kiras. Mm -hmm. So that only means that they having a hard time dealing with the damage of Carl Tizi, and they even have Flap Tizi on their throats as well. Doesn't help. Right now, Psycho goes in. Less than half health, R, R, Qs, R7 coming in. Sin Whoa. gets blasted by Carl TZ. It's looking grim. Oh, they trade out. They finally get rid of this menace that is Flap TZ. It's a trade one for one so far. And in goes the Circling Eagle. Gets knocked up. Lusty, Whisking, trying to look for a nice angle. Carl TZ still to fall. He's got like few takes on R7. It's down to two. Imperial Justice catches none. Oh, from the back line, Finn gets blasted by Carl TZ. Oh, and Rainbow! Rebo misses by one shuriken. It's gonna be three for one. While Wizking says, "Let me just clear this wave and get the hell out." Does it even matter if you catch that Buxia? Like you just saw, Sin just exploded right there. He tries to get a catch, oh. but you don't get Wizking right now. This is not the fight you should even take or even ponder upon. And Brett Esports, well, they're laughing their way to the bank. Oh, I mean. I love the Helicard pick just because of the utility it yeah, brings. Yeah. But Brent Esports, every time Sin goes in, that rhymes by the way. Six out of ten. Uh, okay, getting there. <laughs> now, Sin going in, he is gonna try and pick up someone, but every Brent Esports member just turns to him. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Again, as nice as the kit is, again, you see the intent. But yeah. where's the execution? And right now, it's not on the side of RQ Hoshi. Brenny Sports is ahead by about 9,000 gold here. Yeah, I'm just looking at the charts. I'm definitely thinking that Brent Esports now overpowering in terms of damage. There's oh. no way that, yeah, call in all the defense all you want. You, it's just that there's just a no-go zone for Sin. Mm -hmm. And you don't even want to invest risking <laughs> all the way up into the front line, right? No-go so, zone. Anywhere that yeah. Lusty circling is a no-go zone, all right? You got cops like Flap TZ saying, Sir, this is Arius cordon off. If you come in here, it's not going to be good for you. Now there's the Dark Knight Falls from the back. Sin once more, the first casualty, and Lord still stands. That's going to be the Poissons here pop by Flap TZ from the back. Finn gets destroyed by the OG Shadow Kill. And Whoa. Rebo ain't done. The Doctor takes out Psycho as R7. well. And R7 right in the middle of four members of Ready Sports. Make that five. That's all of them, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to go for the push. It's just Wiz King left to defend. It's is it enough? The answer is no. Another shadow kill by the good doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, Brand Esports with the classic recall in front of your base as they take game number three. Now, if you think that the TP is annoying, the shouts that came out that really just tried to scare Brand Esports, that those were the things that were happening. It's a mind battle here on the battlefield and Brand Esports the recalls was just an answer to that pressure. Like, shout as much as you want, but you will never ever get into our game. Honestly, I have to admit, this has been an absolutely phenomenal game to watch here from both of these teams. And even with the shouts here, and especially after yesterday's game, I think, you know, it's a little bit of a primer. Like, Alter Eagle was a primer for Brent so that these shouts doesn't even phase them, but we 